All right, all right, welcome back. Today, I've got something interesting for you. We're doing some benchmarks in Ruby, and we're gonna compare the MacBook Intel version right here, a 64 gigabyte Intel Core i9 processor, MacBook Pro 16 inch, that's a lot of descriptive words there, versus the new MacBook Air M1. For the specs, see down below. And we're gonna be running the Mandelbrot algorithm from Benchmarks game. And if you're curious about what Mandelbrot is, if you've ever seen fractals that look like this, right here that is generated using the Mandelbrot set you can read the descriptions about it here on this site or on Wikipedia but from our perspective this is just gonna give a very long running process that's gonna utilize all the CPUs to maximum and that's what this test is all about I've done already JavaScript performance benchmarks using this you can see that on my channel as well so today we're doing Ruby and if you're curious to see any of the other languages that are listed on the website I can do those too just let me know in the comments down below and also stay tuned the end for a giveaway. All right, so today we're doing things a little bit differently. I not only want to compare the M1 speed with the Intel speed, I also want to compare Rosetta. And by the way, I already did run this and surprisingly the Intel box actually beat out the M1 in this case. However, what I didn't run yet is the comparison. I didn't run this on Rosetta yet. So Intel emulation mode on the M1. We'll see what the result of that is. Is that going to be equivalent to an actual Intel box or is it going to be slower? I have a feeling it's going to be a little bit slower, but we'll see what the result is at the end. And I also want to see how the Intel Mac compares plugged in and not plugged in executing this algorithm. So we got a few things going on today. Let's dig in. Now to execute this on a Mac, it's pretty simple. I already have Ruby installed. All I got to do is find the algorithm I want to use, copy the code. I'm going to copy this here. And uh, this is the command line for executing the code. It even gives a few flags that are suggested. So we're going to create a new file and then pass it the argument 16,000. And that's the argument that was passed in to this program in order to keep the results consistent that they report on their site. But they executed on an i5. This is going to be an i9 and an M1. All right, so let's begin. I've pasted this into a file called mandel.rb, a Ruby file. And let's head out to the command line here. I'm going to go to that directory and I'm going to execute that code. I'm also going to add the time command in the beginning so we can see how long it takes. All right, I'll set that up and then I'll do the exact same thing on the M1 box. And so I have my file here, mandel.rb, named exactly the same way. And there we have mandel.rb. I'm going to use the time command here as well and execute it. Now, this is using my regular term terminal, which is the M1 terminal, the Apple Silicon variety. If you don't know what I'm talking about, hold on, I'll explain this in a bit. There is a way to run a different terminal, the Rosetta terminal, and I'll show you that in a bit. So let's first execute this test. I'm going to hit enter at the same time on these and let's go. So this will take a little bit of time to execute. Now, while it's executing, I want to show you how the utilization of the CPUs is working. So we're going to go to activity monitor here. And this is on the Intel machine. You can see that we have 99.9% .9 on eight CPUs and it's starting up the fans. It's not quite hot yet, but it's getting there. We know how Intel machines work by now. And let's take a look at the M1. There's the activity monitor. And you can see that this is under the Apple architecture. So we also have eight CPUs here being pretty pretty well utilized architecture is Apple. That's important because we're going to do the emulation later on the Intel emulation through Rosetta and this will all say Intel or should. So let's see what happens. Let's see how long this takes and uh, we'll be back in a second or a minute or five minutes. I think it takes about a few minutes to run this. We'll be back. Folks, we have our first result. It's a loud one, but it's first. It finished first and it won, and that's our Intel machine. So this reports one minute and 57 seconds. And we're still waiting for the M1. Okay, now it's finished. Two minutes and 34 seconds on the M1. So as you can see, folks, sometimes the Intel machine still wins. Now, just so that we can get a little bit of an average, I'm gonna run this one more time. It didn't take that long, so I won't get hungry sitting here and waiting for it. Let's go. All right, Intel is done and the fans are going nuts. You know what? Let's check the temperature on this thing while it's still hot. All right, the Intel box is at 42 degrees Celsius. Not too bad. This one is at 37. That five degrees really makes a difference. Second run on the Intel box, one minute, 56 seconds, about the same as the first time. And the second box is done. The M1 comes in second at two minutes, 38 seconds. So just four seconds slower than the first run. I would say these results are pretty consistent. So let's move on to the next 
next test, which is going to be the Intel box is gonna be plugged in and the M1 is going to be emulating Intel under Rosetta. So in order to do the emulation part, I created a copy of the terminal and I called it Rosy Term. All you have to do is just open up utilities and applications, find terminal, duplicate it. And then the important thing you have to do is get info and make sure that open using Rosetta is checkmarked. And I just usually also like to rename it so I can see which one is which. So now this is the emulated terminal. And if I run the exact same program here, it's gonna be executing under Intel architecture and not Apple. So let's see the difference. I'm gonna go to my code directory here and we'll execute the exact same thing. Now I'm gonna plug in my Intel box and do the same test again. Why am I doing this? Well, because the Intel processor throttles, not the processor, but the machine throttles the processor when it's not plugged in on Intel. So we'll juice it up a little bit to help it out. By the way, on the Intel box, the battery is at 85% now. And on the M1, the battery is on 92%. And I've had them both at 100% when we started out. So this test is taking quite a toll as far as battery power as well. All right, we are ready to do this one more time. Let's clear the screen and run this. I'm gonna use the exact same parameters. Let's do this. Okay, the Intel box is making some noise again. Understandable, we're at 43 degrees now, 36 over here. So the M1 actually cooled down <laughs> during this process. That's probably not what happened. It's probably just an inaccuracy of where I took the reading. All right, we are done on the Intel box. And, huh, two minutes and two seconds. The time increased. Kind of surprising to me because I was expecting it to decrease, but we're gonna run this again just to make sure. Still waiting for that M1. Oh, let's check out the activity monitor while we're here. And you can see that Ruby is executing on eight processors under Intel architecture. And that's what we expected. It's still taking up the majority of the CPUs, which is good, but it seems to be taking a bit longer. Interesting, okay, still waiting. That Rosetta is doing translations. It does a really good job most of the time, but it will take a toll on the speed and performance. All right, it's done now at three minutes and 50 seconds. Let's do the test one more time, one last time, just to make sure we get some averages in here and let's go. Okay, we're back to baseline and the Intel box, apparently plugging it in, didn't really do anything for us to improve the speed and the result is 1 minute 57 seconds the exact same result we got the first time we ran the test now we're just waiting for the m1 to finish this test while that's finishing up let's talk about the giveaway a little bit ago i gave away this keyboard why is it still here because whoever won it didn't want it because it was going to be a hassle with shipping however i'm not a user of this mechanic keyboard i have my other keyboards the butterfly keys on the macbooks so who wants it? Here's how you enter. Leave a comment down below. I'm gonna pick a winner randomly, but I also check to make sure you're a subscriber to the channel. So subscribe and I'd appreciate a like for this video as well. It doesn't cost you anything and it helps me out a lot. But if you did not like this video, let me know in the comments down below what could be better. Good luck. Okay, still waiting for the M1. There it is, it finished. And this was four minutes, seven seconds, the longest test so far. So what does this tell us? This tells us that the Intel box is still a better choice, whether it's this particular algorithm, the Mandelbrot using Ruby algorithm, or is it better for Ruby? That's a question yet to be answered. This test does not prove that the Intel box is better for Ruby. It just tests this specific benchmark. If you want to see more languages tested, let me know again in the comments down below. Hope to hear from you. And thanks again for watching. Hope you have a good day and I'll see you in the next one.